Good. So basically, it's a fancy French word that means to sort, right? This person needs help. This person can wait. This person's dead, right? So you have four categories of triage. So you have four categories of triage. You have your green category, which is your minimal, right? Those are your people who are not in danger of losing life and you're expecting, right? Even if we were in the best hospital, in the best country with Derek Shepard and, you know, what's her name? Meredith Gray. Meredith Gray, absolutely. If she was on our team, we couldn't save this person. Cardiac thump, right? No. So, those are your dead and dying. Make them as comfortable as possible, move them out of the way, and move on. Absolutely not. In first aid, in triage, and in stretch repair, rank is not an issue. The injury is how you decipher who needs help. It's a good question. It just might take some time, okay? So bear with me. All right, any questions on triage? Basic principles of patient care, CPR, square root of harness. We don't want to get shocked. So am I going to come up here like this and do that? No, right? Because if I touch him, now I become a conductor. Because electricity is sneaky. It cheats. It takes the least, least path of resistance out of your body. So if you're leaning up against some kind of metal object, if you're up here, assess the scene, secure the power, nobody knows where the power is at. You're going to throw this over, grab it, and pull them off there, right? Release them from that source. What's gonna blood, no wounds? Blood, right? That way, instead of going like this, I got blood, but I don't know where, right? Every time you touch him or her, look at your hands. No blood, no wounds. No blood, no wounds. No blood, no wounds. No blood, no wounds. No 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 Verify that there are no other injuries that you need to treat. So our patients keep form and transport. After every patient, that's gonna be your last deal. Keep calm. Keep warm and transport. The reason we say keep calm is a calm patient is a lot easier to deal with, right? So when you get into constraining an irrational patient, if McBride or get them down to medical so we can give them fresh O2 and then get them on out of here. Also, no, I'm missing something here. Alright, same thing. We're gonna check for any other injuries, head and toe, front to back. Same thing with electrical shock. When these people start you know, falling out, dying out on us, we're gonna hurt, it hurts like hell. So, so, we are, uh, we're definitely gonna keep an eye on these patients and our third degree burns, because with burns, they're kinda tricky. So we're gonna patch them up on scene and everything, but from there, we're worried about infection and stuff later on down the line. So, we're gonna wrap it up, and then we're gonna take care of them later. Third degree burns, what's that look like? Alright, looks like that black charred skin looks like basically you took a log out of a fire after a while. It's that really nasty looking stuff. They're gonna have pain on that site itself? No. No. So on the third degree burn site itself, there's not gonna be a lot of pain there because all those nerve endings and everything are dead. They got burned off. They're done. So where the third degree stops and the second degree starts, that's where that pain is gonna be. So how are we gonna treat that? All right, I was looking for looking for you to look on the blue card. How are we going to treat burns? Lord just said morphine. I like where your head's at, though. Yeah, what's that? Is it for an ACP patient? No. All right, so that's how we're going to measure it. How are we going to treat it? Dry sterile exposure. Bam! There we go, Rhodes. We're going to take a dry sterile ETP. We're going to expose the wound. And then we're going to pull that skin off. So Which that goes back to principles of fair state, right? Which are? Further injury. Further injury, absolutely. We rip that off, it becomes bleeding now. You got an open wound, what's that gonna affect? Or what's that gonna cause? Infection. Infection, absolutely. So basic principles of first aid are critical in every step of care that you give this patient, right? So the it's not that large. So if my entire arm and my entire leg is burned, what's my percentage? I know we asked you on the math. Twenty seven? Thirty six. Alright, if my entire arm and my entire leg 27%. So yes, it's hard. I'm from Texas. I can I can talk, you know, kinda okay. I can math. You got electrocuted, why didn't you fall down? 
HM2 said they would fall down. <laughs> right? So, you want to maintain positive control of this dressing, right? So, when I say that, I mean I'm not going to let it do this right here and then just flail it everywhere, right? Because then I open up myself for infection because everything that's down here is dirty. Get into more advanced training like okay. what we do on GQ. But so his question was, are you going to palpitate? Are you going to take recrepitus? Yes, thank you. And yes, you and you can always secure it. Yeah, you can secure it here. Is that okay? Two fingers. Yeah, you want to make sure you can get two fingers. Like nice. Very good. So you want to always evaluate your patient. You want to <laughs> he just like totally. Yeah, just kind of, kind of comes up. Yeah. Oh. That way, when you put it on there. How was that? Push. That's nice. Yeah. Put it on the side. tell you that they're choking? No, they're gonna choke slowly and they're going to die, right? So when we roll him, can you breathe? Right? Yeah, we're the victim side is here. We take his arm, lift it up, and then we're gonna roll him this way, right? He choke on his own blood. This is specifically only for an unconscious patient. Okay, unconscious, because if he was conscious, say that for me, sir. If he was conscious, all right, and then you leave him. You leave him where he helps you. This guy is pretty much safe as long as he can breathe, all right? So that makes sense for the drainage away. Never into the body, all right? So I'll break up these tubes and then do it to each other. So I told you to lie straight. You 
get your flap out of the way and you tighten. How far are you going to tighten down? Until the bleeding stops. You tighten your spindlet down until the bleeding stops. If you tighten it down and the bleeding still goes, you've got it all the way down and it's still bleeding. What are you going to do? Put another one. Put another tourniquet on, right? Exactly. So, you go. Don't put a tourniquet around the neck. Bad idea. So, right? So, why would I use pan and not blood? Blood wipes off. Blood will wash off when it gets wet, right? Yep. So, always have a pan or a sharpie or some way. How well is my tourniquet doing? Why is the patient laying on the flight deck for eight hours? Right? So, no more than eight hours. And then if you find the limb with that blood, if one of these tourniquets gets compromised, right? So, after this, we want to lay the patient down, right? Stretcher bear is a pivotal role because we need everybody on Gerald R. Ford to be able to respond to a patient. They need to be able to come up to a scene, assess the patient, use triage, and assess the scene so they can effectively treat that patient when medical care is not around. Stretcher bear is broke up into two parts. Part one is whenever we go through our Gitmo 8 war wounds. Those are our amputations, sucking chest wounds, burns, smoke inhalation, electric shock, things that are crucial and um, more relevant to shipboard life. Um, we're teaching these guys how to respond and treat a patient um, using the basic principles of first aid, which are save lives, prevent further injury, and prevent infection. And we actually use a dummy that's about 185 pounds, strap them to the uh, reeve sleeve, and transport them all over the ship. Everybody plays a role on Gerard R. Ford with Stretcher Bear. Everybody should be trained on how to come up on a scene and administer that crucial first aid. 